Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Boastful Hope. Beloved family, our text says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ to whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Romans 5, 1-5 With so much adversity, suffering, injustice, crisis, and death in the world today, how can we boast in hope? How can we have audacity and boldness to hope? If we keep our eyes fixed on the world and look to the leaders of the world for solutions, then our hope is hopeless. Mankind is used to just acting and doing what we want or can do. The reason we hope is that we don't have the ability to bring about what we are wanting, seeking, or needing. Then hope is really waiting for what we want to happen. But family, this is where the problem starts. Where is our hope placed? In other words, who are we waiting on? Isaiah 40, 31 says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. In order for us to boast in hope, we have to boast in the Lord. See, it's King Jesus Christ who is able to save. And if we are hoping to survive and need to be rescued, then we put our hope in the one that saves or rescues. Paul put it this way, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 6, 19-20 So what does this verse mean? Melchizedek was the high priest of El Elyon, God Most High. His name actually means king of righteousness. The other men ordained high priests like Caiaphas who plotted to kill King Jesus were not of the same line as Melchizedek, the high priest of God. Makes you wonder, who was Caiaphas high priest of? My point here is that King Jesus Christ was the high priest and mediator just as King Melchizedek was. Our hope is in God and we have an advocate For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2 verse 5 King Solomon says something that makes one believe that hope is a part of life. We can't or shouldn't avoid it. He says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Proverbs 13, 12 Now, if we think about it, Whom of us wants to hope? Hope suggests that there is something of need, there is lack. But intrinsic to Solomon's statement is we will lack, we will be in need, and there is something missing. He says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. In other words, if you defer or put off hope, you will become depressed and even sick. And this, dear family, is why we must have hope. And not only have hope, but boast in the one we put our hope in. So, beloved family, in spite of what is going on in the world, keep your faith. Keep believing that King Jesus Christ, our High Priest, is interceding before the righteous judge for us today. Keep the faith in God. For what else will you be able to fill your hope with? For faith is the substance of things hoped for, 
and the evidence of things not seen. Your faith is that, quote, physical matter, unquote, that substance that fills your hope. And King Jesus reminds us, if we have mustard seed faith, we become mountain movers. And if you can move mountains with your faith, then your hope should be as big as that mountain you are about to move. Paul says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, Hebrews 6.19. In other words, with that kind of hope, we can expect not only to move mountains, but that hope also anchors us in the storms of life. Aha, that's good news, family. I'm hopeful that my faith will not fail. Do you know why? Because as King Jesus prayed for Peter's faith to not fail when Satan sift him, he is praying for my faith and your faith to not fail as well. Oh, and we do know God answers King Jesus' prayers because he is conferring with himself. Glory be to God. He is the God of hope. So we can have boastful hope, knowing, as the three Hebrew boys said, O king, we are hopeful that God will deliver us from your hand. But even if he doesn't, we bow and serve him only. Let that be your confession today, fam. Put your trust and hope in God. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Much love.